Find other great podcasts like this one at podmoth.network. Welcome to the Brutal, Bizarre, and Boozy podcast. I'm Declan, the son. And I'm Jane, the mom. This is the podcast where we talk about brutal crimes, bizarre occurrences, and get you drunk with cocktails themed around one of our stories. To lighten things up, we'd like to end our time with a chaser. Please keep in mind some of our stories might be upsetting to young or sensitive ears. We love hearing from our listeners, so feel free to contact us by email or social media. You can find our contact info in the show notes for this episode. If you'd like to support us through Patreon, you can find us there at Brutal, Bizarre, and Boozy Podcast, or use the link in our show notes. Welcome to the Getting Down and Wordy Podcast ad. What do we do on this podcast? Well, it's the first at a musical podcast. Can I try that again in real words so that people can understand? Fine. We talk about the intersection of popular music and language. Oh, can we also talk about Eurovision? Okay. Find us on Apple and Spotify. We are a Podmoth Network podcast. Hey, you. Yeah, you. Do you like cracking into curious creatures? Perhaps you ponder the paranormal. Have you ever got a hanker in for the haunted? Ever entertained the existence of extraterrestrials? Or have you ever just wanted to hear genuine encounters of any kind? If you have answered yes to any of these questions, then Cryptids, Creeps, and Conspiracy Podcast is right up your alley. So grab your sense of humor and open your mind as we take a journey to uncover the mysteries behind kooky critters, spooky specters, enigmatic entities, and the controversial conspiracies that surround them. Buckle up, because we're going to have a good time. Welcome back, everybody. Thank you for joining us uh, once again for another episode. What story are you going to be telling us about today, Mom? Well, I am going to be telling you about a serial killer who inspired a book series and a TV show. Hmm, interesting. And he, is, he was a serial killer in Brazil. Hmm. I don't know if I know any. His well, name was Pedro. There was one that I was going to... There was one serial killer. I don't know if... I can't remember if it was in Brazil or another South American country, but so this one serial killer... And they like preserved his head in a jar in a museum. Oh, yeah, I was gonna do a story about that, but it was like a pretty quick story. He shoved a couple people off a bridge or something like that. Oh no, this guy killed a lot of people. <laughs> oh, but okay. We're probably not gonna feel real bad for these people. We'll get into why later. Mm -hmm. What are you gonna be telling us about? I'm going to be talking about the Tom Lang Cave Rescue, which oh. many people probably heard of. It was all over the place when it happened, and it was fairly right. recent. So, Right. To go with that cocktail, or to go with that story, I have the Cave Inn Cocktail. Such a great name for it. Yes, and it fits perfectly with the story. Absolutely. Well, the cave didn't collapse, but it says cave in the name, so close enough. <laughs> Absolutely. So, Good enough. This cocktail consists of one ounce of almond liqueur, one ounce of Bacardi 151, one splash of orange juice, uh, and cranberry juice, one ounce of Southern Comfort peach liqueur. Pour all the ingredients into an old-fashioned glass filled three-quarters of the way with ice. Stir well. Add cranberry juice to taste and stir again briefly. Let's give this a try. I don't think this is going to be very good. I think it's going to be garbage. Yeah, I, I am predicting that I will hate this. <laughs> Too many liqueur in there. I hate liqueurs Agreed. for the most part. Agreed. It just tastes and like syrup. Like, yeah. Ugh. I also question amaretto with peach. Those two don't seem like they Maybe would go Maybe like together. a peach cobbler-esque flavor. Okay, but, but yeah, you can put almonds know, it doesn't. <laughs> in like it doesn't a peach like cobbler almonds. in the crumble. But you don't yeah. 
Oh, I don't it's know. It's a little right. funky, I think. Let's, Let's go. Let's give it a try. Yeah, that's... I put a lot of cranberry juice in mine, so, so I think did that's... Because I. I used a big cup. <laughs> so... I... I think it's not terrible. I... Honestly, all I taste is the peach liqueur. Yeah. Hmm. I'm try and again. I did not do Southern Comfort peach liqueur. I just did um, a, another brand of peach liqueur because that's mm. what I have, and I'm not going to go buy Southern Comfort. I just use peach whiskey for mine. I, <laughs> I don't. I don't hate it as much as I thought I would. To be honest, yeah, it's I not thought I would horrible. really hate it. No, not horrible, but not the best thing we've had. I think no. my last drink was way better. Your last drink, that lemonade, super that, good. Holy crap! The I have made that probably three times. I think since we did that recording, <laughs> so it is a hundred percent a staple in this house now. So let's talk about the Tom Luong Cave Rescue. So the Tom Luong Cave is a 6.2 mile long cave between Thailand and Myanmar. Like most caves, it has different tunnels and offshoots with some spots changing in height. So it's not like you walk in and it's just it's not up one or down. It, big cave. It, like there's parts that go up. You have to climb up and then you have to climb down and okay. then climb back up and go right and blah, blah, blah. It goes all over the place. Okay. Yes. Cool. On June 23rd, 2018, 25-year-old assistant coach Ekapon uh, Kathawang and his football team of 12 boys, ranging in the age from uh, 11 to 16, decided it would be a fun team-building exercise to go and explore the caves together. The cave was off-limits from July to November due to the chance of flooding, so they figured now would be the last chance they would get to check it out before it was closed for the rest of the year. A short while after they entered the cave, it started raining pretty heavily. The rain showed no signs of stopping or slowing down after a few hours of hiking. The group made it about two and a half miles into the cave when they heard a strange noise. But they didn't know it was raining, right? Because they're inside? Because they were already in the cave. They probably okay. wouldn't have gone in if it was raining, but it started raining like right when they well... went in there, so... Okay, so we've been caving here locally, close by. There's a cave system mm -hmm. that's like a half an hour away from us, and we've been through it a few times. I used to go to it when I was a kid all the time, and I guarantee 100% I never would have thought anything about going into a cave while it's raining outside. Well, Would not have even crossed my mind it's... as being a bad thing. I think the lava beds where we go to, that's right. a different story because it doesn't rain that much in Klamath Falls and no. not as much as it would in Thailand. Like, Oh, for sure. I think for that's sure. a pretty like humid and wet part of the world. Like, I right, think it rains but a lot there. what I'm saying is, do you think that they would have been concerned with flooding of the cave? Yeah, because... They had signs outside saying, don't go in from July to November because it can flood. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Disregard my I, had, I assumed stupid. they would know. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Got it. So after they heard the strange noise, they looked behind them and noticed water was starting to fill the cave. And Fuck. the group ran to the highest point in the cave they could find and dropped a majority of the supplies, like, in the rush. So they had some water and <sighs> snacks for hiking and stuff like that. And right. they panicked and just started climbing up. Uh, they climbed onto, like, a little ledge up in okay. one of the chambers of the cave. 
and this this spot where they were sitting the water couldn't get to them but when they looked back they realized there was no way out now shit yeah so all they could do is keep going further into the cave which obviously is not a good idea no yeah since they were in a cave and they had no cell reception to call for help of course yeah at around seven that night when none of the boys returned from their trip their families became very worried and called the head coach to try and find out where their kids were the head coach called everyone on the team with no answer except for one kid one team member had decided to stay home for the trip and told his coach that the team went to Tham Long Caves after practice. When the coach arrived at the cave, he found abandoned bicycles and some, like, soccer bags and immediately knew something was wrong. And he tried to go into the cave and saw that it was completely full of water. Flooded. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah, so he called authorities and rescue mission was launched. British caver Vern Unsworth was set to explore the cave the following day when he got word of the missing football team. Vern had great knowledge of the ins and outs of the caves because he had explored them before. He reached out to British Cave Rescue Council and requested some help. Uh, along with the, I'm just going to call them BCRC because it's a lot easier than saying British Cave Rescue Council, but. Oh, yeah, yeah. So the, they uh, they sent some people out there, and along with them were some Navy SEALs from the Thai Royal Navy, um, which I didn't know was a thing. I didn't know there was other Navy SEALs. I thought it was just like America's Navy SEALs, but I guess Thailand yeah. has their own Navy SEALs that they also call the Navy SEALs. Wow. I did not know that. That's super I didn't cool. I know it either. Um, so those... The the Thai Navy SEALs arrived on the 25th to dive the cave. When they got into the water, they said the water was so murky that even with their flashlights on, they couldn't really see anything. Oh, like if they extended their arm out, they couldn't really see their hand very well. Oh. Because oh. like, so due to continuous range, whoa. So like, Plenty of people go cave diving. There's a bunch of underwater caves that crazy people love to explore. I could never do that. No. But they, they like those are typically the water isn't moving. Like it's been sitting in that cave for so long right. and it's just stagnant in there. But since it was actively raining, it was pushing all the mud and debris and shit into the cave, oh. making it like stirring up all the Dirty. silt on the bottom. Yeah. yeah, making it impossible to see through. Gross. Due to continuous rains, the search was paused briefly, and on the 29th of June, divers from the British Cave Rescue Council, uh, the U.S. Air Force Pararescue, a special re response group from Australia Federal Police, and a Chinese team of divers from Beijing Peaceland Foundation had all gathered to help rescue these kids. So there was five different, like, diving teams all came to help these kids out wow that's awesome and at this point they had already been in the cave for about six days wow Ooh, that's a yeah it's fucking terrifying divers were able to place grid lines throughout the muddy water to make it easier to find the correct path so like since they couldn't see they just put a rope like all the way to where the kids were located okay. but so the diving team finally reached the football team at around 10 p.m on july 2nd so they've been in there for a long time at this point and they probably wouldn't have been found if uh so what the people that were running the guideline had to pop up and fix their goggles real quick and when they popped up they saw all the kids sitting in like the little cave. So Holy they could have cow. walked right or like swam right past them. Oh my, that's amazing luck. Holy crap. Yeah. Wow. 
So a couple of the Thai Navy SEALs stayed with the boys to do health checks and provide some hope to the kids. They also brought some, like, snacks and water and stuff like that. Man. Everyone who, like, the whole football team and the head coach, they were all safe, but they were starting to panic uh, since a few of the kids didn't know how to swim. So, like... Okay. Yeah. A camp was set up in the cave entrance as, like, a headquarter for rescue teams. Some measures that were taken were using dogs to find possible ventilation tubes that would allow another way to get out of the cave. They also set up a bunch of water pumps and throughout the whole process pumped out about a billion liters of water from the cave. Wow. Whoa. And they were able to find uh, like 700 diving tanks just to make it so like they could constantly be running trips back and forth. Wow. Said about 500 were in use and 200 were being refilled like every trip they made. Wow. Yeah. Some things that made the uh, rescue extremely difficult was the water. Since the water was not stagnant, similar to other like underwater caves as I talked about, it created a current that constantly stirred up the silt at the bottom of the cave and made it harder for them to swim. Because oh. there's a current actively dragging them. Right. Oh my god. Yeah. There were also parts of the cave that were flooded and some higher points where the boys were staying. So like there's like in between where the boys were and the entrance of the cave was was called chamber three. It was like it wasn't flooded yet and there was a big part of like uneven, rocky, gravelly stuff. So they had to get out, take their fins off, walk over that, get back in, put their fins in, refresh their tanks, go for another round. What a pain in the ass since the boys were so deep in the cave it took divers about six hours just to reach them and about five to get back because the current was on their side on the way back wow oh my goodness that's so long yeah my worst nightmare honestly i know you hate the water yeah like uh, and caves <laughs> <Freaking>. yeah <laughs> After several days, the rescuers determined that they were quickly running out of time when decreasing oxygen levels were discovered. Shit. By July 8th, so that's 23rd, 24th, 25th, 26th, 27th, 28th, 29th, 30th, 31st, 32nd, 33rd, 34th, 35th, 36th, 37th, 38th, 39th, 40th, 41st, 42nd, 43rd, 44th, 45th, 46th, 47th, 48th, 49th, 50th, 51st, 16 days that they've been in there. Oh, that's a long the, time. Yeah. Oh, can you so imagine they discovered the that the Oh god! Yeah, because they gotta use the bathroom. I mean, <laughs> maybe they exactly could just what I was poop into the water, but <laughs> still. Oh. Uh, yeah. Okay. So by July eighth, the oxygen levels was measured to be fifteen percent. The level oh, needed shit. to maintain normal function for humans is between nineteen and twenty three percent. Okay. So they were running out of oxygen Whoa. fast. Yeah, not good. <laughs> After tons and tons of planning, it was determined that the safest way to remove the football team would be to sedate them and attach oxygen tanks to them as divers directed the unconscious football players through the cave. Wow. Which is fucking terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> like, plenty of things go wrong. And so I heard this recently that um, anesthetitians, like, they have to have some kind of it's either that they have to have crazy insurance or they are liable or something like that because, like, people die a lot from anesthesia if it's not done right. So oh there's, like, uh, just super sketchy. And that's yeah. done in a hospital, not in a cave underwater. Right? Yeah. Are you going to get into how they sedated them? Yes. Okay. So monsoons were expected to roll in without, like, within a, about a week, which would fully flood the caves until at least October. So the dive crews had to work fast. They had about Shit. a week deadline at this point. Yeah. Which would probably be when the boys ran out of oxygen anyways. So they needed to get them out soon. For the first part of the extraction, 18 rescue divers consisting of 13 international cave divers and five Thai Navy SEALs were sent into the cave to retrieve the boys, with one diver to accompany each boy on the dive out. 
The international cave diving team was led by four British divers, John uh, Volanthan, Richard Stanton, Jason Mallison, and Chris Jewell, each assigned to one kid, and two Australians, Richard Harris, an anesthesiologist. So okay. this guy... So a doctor. I don't know if they would have made it out. Some dude who happens to be an anesthesiologist and an avid cave diver. Like, that's a match made in heaven right there. Oh, yeah, for these guys, for sure. And his friend Craig Callahan, who was a veteran. So two people who had some medical experience, one a vet, but still a doctor okay. and an actual anesthetician or anesthesiologist. Wow, that's amazing. Uh, when divers arrived at the football team and told them the plan, the team decided which order to send the kids in. And I thought this was, it's not funny, but it's kind of like, it's a little, it, it's, I don't know. So It's kind of Lord of the Flies, sounds like. If they're well, choosing. no, it, they went. No, it was good. They went like, yeah, it, it's kind of okay. like a whole, like a sweet moment. Oh, okay. So they had no idea that they were worldwide news at this point. Like, I remember seeing this all yeah. over the place when it was happening. For sure. Like, everybody thought uh, that they were going to be deceased when they found them. Yeah. So, and. They yeah. had no idea that they were that big a news. And so they thought they would have to ride their bikes home. <laughs> Aww. And so the the way they decided who would go first is who lived the furthest away gets to go first. <laughs> because he has a longer ride. Yeah. Oh my God. How yeah. sweet. But little okay. did they know about 10,000 people were waiting for them just at the mouth of the cave. <gasps> Holy that included shit. rescuers, their parents, volunteers. Like, there was oh a fuck ton God. of people there to help. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. That's a lot of friggin' people. That's a lot of people. Yeah. They probably wouldn't have been saved if there weren't that many people, though, because it was so sketchy. Wow. Like, So the boys were dressed in a wetsuit, a buoyancy jacket, a harness, and a positive pressure face mask. Harris administered an anesthetic ketamine to the boys before the journey, rendered them, oh. rendering them fully unconscious, and some alprazolam to prevent anxiety. Okay. Wow. So they, they knocked them out. That's a uh, recipe. Yeah. Recipe Ooh. and Xanax. That's ooh. okay. <laughs> They're having a good time coming out of that cave. <laughs> yeah. So the ketamine would only last for about 45 minutes to an hour. So some diving teams were provided with medical assistance and stationed along the way to top up the boys as they made their journey back. Okay. So like I said, there's like the – there's like high and low spots and then right. there's the third chamber before they like have the final stretch to get to the mouth of the cave. So the boys were tethered to the divers in case one lost sight of the boys they were helping. They were just roped okay. to them because you can't see shit in there. Right. It's dark. You said it was horrible visibility. Yeah. And so with a chamber in between the boys and the entrance, which had like super unpredictable terrain, they drilled a pulley system, sort of like a zip line, oh. was installed in the cave. Please and they put the kids swim. on the sled and then just send them down <laughs> to the other side, like where they could get into the water. Okay. That's cool. Uh, the distance from the chamber to the entrance was originally about five hours of swimming, but the water pumps had reduced that to about an hour. Okay. So that once they were in chamber three and sent over the zip line, they had about an hour of diving left before they were out. On July 8th, four boys were successfully rescued. On July 9th, four more were rescued. And on July 10th, the last four and the head coach were rescued from the cave. Ultimately, all of the football team survived. One Navy SEAL, however, did die while trying to rescue the boys. Oh. But it could have been a lot worse, like, yeah. given the circumstances. One, all the kids made it out. That's incredible. Yeah. Having been That's... unconscious underwater. Wild. That's not a, usually a good risk. That's how the... Nope. That's how the Navy SEAL died. He passed out, I think, due to, like, a tank issue and oh. drowned. But, yeah. Yeah. The, oh, 
such a crazy operation. I remember hearing all about that on the news, and it was just a, it was wild. Yeah, that is. Oh my gosh! There's I can't a even really imagine. good movie. Uh, I gotta find this real quick. You, I was trying to find movies about. We watched a cave movie that I think was before oh, this had that all happened. Fucking traumatized me. Yeah, yes, I know, I know it talk. did. And, and the, I was trying the to find gets the her name. Ear of the movie. ripped off by the rope. Yes, it's something deep. It's something deep. Uh, okay. But anyways, so the movie based on this is called Thirteen Lives, and it's yes really good to watch because it really okay. like shows how stressful everything was and like. Uh, it's it's very anxiety inducing movie. I, know, I gotta find to this find movie. That one movie. It's gonna bug me. <laughs> Are you trying to find that too? Yeah. We'll just cut this. Sanctum, I believe. Okay. I think you're right. That was a horrible movie. I had no idea. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to I traumatize don't spoil you. Spoil it, but like, it only one person made it out. <laughs> like, yeah, out of a huge group, and everyone just dies in horrific ways. It's not cool. It was terrible. Yeah, but that's. I would also recommend watching that because it shows just how scary cave diving is. Like, agreed. Doesn't um. Uh, why am I blanking on his name? Right, Dad's friend doesn't he do that Don. shit? Don, yeah, Don? he goes. Yeah. he goes cave diving. <laughs> Shout out to Don that you're a psychopath, yeah. and I hope his psycho. wife puts down a whole lot of extra life insurance they, when he goes cave yeah, diving. Yeah, I was gonna say they better have some crazy insurance plans on him. He's a <laughs> he's a risk to himself. Not anyone else. <laughs> he <himself>. is. <laughs> I don't know how he's still alive. It's not me either. All right, let's hear about your serial killer story. My serial killer. Okay. So we've talked about the show Dexter. I think mm -hmm. a few times on the podcast and you know, and I'm sure, you know, anybody listening regularly has heard me talk about Dexter and they know that I love that show. Um, we used to have the watch parties with our friends and we would enjoy the show together and we would have all sorts of theme nights based on Dexter to watch. Mm -hmm. So for people who Shout don't out, know, uh, Shout out Ty's face food. Yes. The, his, the, his face sculpture. The with face the, dip. <laughs> oh, my God. That was so gross. Yeah. Um, for people who don't know about the show Dexter, it originated from a book series and is about a serial killer who kills only other criminals. But I never realized that there show. was. It is. It's a great show. And. Watching it the whole time, I did not know that it was inspired by a real serial killer. So that's cool. In his own way, the uh, serial killer sought to avenge the victims of other criminals, just like the character in Dexter. So it's believed that this serial killer had over 70 victims. And over half of them were fellow inmates that he encountered while in prison. However, this number may be on the low side because he has confessed to over a hundred victims. Which is That's a lot. A lot. So here is the story of Pedro Rodriguez Filho. Pedro was born on October 29th, 1954, on a farm in Brazil. Now, there was a name to the town that I could not pronounce. So we're just going with the country because I can pronounce Brazil. Yes. A rough uh, life yeah. started for him before he was even born. His father brutally beat his mother while she was pregnant with Pedro. 
that caused an injury to his skull, which he had uh, when he was born. So he was born he had with brain a, damage before he was born. Oh my he had god! A skull injury due to that beating. Yeah. When he was 13 years old, he got in a fight with a cousin that led him to push the cousin into a sugarcane press. He claimed this was the first time he thought about killing another person. Like he a hydraulic did... press? Well, I don't know. It was a press. I've seen built So I've to... seen videos of like street vendors making sugarcane juice and they have like it's like yeah. a wood chipper almost. Like it, it just like crushes all the juice out. Well, it could have killed the cousin, but it didn't because mm. Pedro pulled him out before he could be killed <laughs> by it. But he claims this was the first time that like he thought in the moment, if I leave this guy here, he's going to die. And he was like, ah, maybe I won't leave him to die. And he pulled his cousin out. So the cousin survived, but I think he had a pretty significant injury from it. Either way, he didn't kill anyone that day. However, just a few months later, he did commit his first murder. And this murder was not for his own direct benefit, but was to avenge his father's name. So Pedro's father worked as a security guard for the local school. Another guard at the school accused the father of stealing food from the cafeteria. This led to the deputy mayor of the town firing Pedro's father. Which, total aside... If that happened in the United States, the deputy mayor would have nothing to do with that. It would all be the school itself. So I think it's interesting. I don't know if it's because it was a small town or if things are just different there, but Pedro's father was fired by the deputy mayor, which Pedro did not care for. So Pedro got his revenge when he took his grandfather's gun to city hall where he shot and killed the deputy mayor. He was 14 years old. Damn. (laughs) That's great. That's some real small town shit right there. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) You could almost see that. Yeah. It's, it's almost like our town. Like it makes me wonder like, Oh, that kind of shit could happen here. But Hmm. Pedro then found the guard that had accused his father of the theft and he killed him too. Jesus. So he believed that the guard making the accusation was actually the one responsible for the theft. So in his mind, he was like, okay, everything's even and square now. He was getting justice for his father and the false accusations. That's like Hammurabi's code shit. Eye for an eye, hand for hand. Yeah. So these two murders made Pedro a wanted man, wanted child, actually, because he's 14 years old. A wanted teenager. Yeah. So he fled his hometown and he went to Sao Paulo. This is where he started going after drug dealers. He started robbing the drug dens and killing the dealers, which earned him the nickname Pedrino Matador, which translates to Lil Petey Killer, which I don't know what that has to do with. Lil, L-I-L, or Little? Well, it was written in the resources that I found as Lil, as in L-I-L. But I still don't get... Any aspiring rappers need a name. That's a good one. Yeah. (laughs) I don't get what Petey has to do with it, but I don't know. That was his nickname was Pedrino Matador. So Pedro soon met a girl and fell in love. Her name was Maria and he called her Bettina. They started living together and she soon became pregnant with his child. However, their love life soon ended because a gang deal a gang leader went after Pedro by having Maria killed. Not a good look. Pedro in a gang? Pedro, well, he was kind of in a gang and associated with gang members. And so I, I found some sources that said, yes, he was, but I found others that said, no, he wasn't necessarily in a gang. 
Either way. It's probably associated with them somehow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, the guy went after Pedro by going after his girl, which is it's just low. But yeah. now Pedro's pissed. I mean, he's already been whacking drug dealers. Now he's going after a gang. So, of course, because he's angry, he went after the gang leader and everyone else in the gang. And he killed all of them. I don't know how big... I don't know how big the gang was, but he killed every member of the gang. Brazil has some really, like, big gangs that are bad like the in the favelas or whatever yeah i'm i'm thinking it wasn't too big of a gang because well yeah because you said it's a smaller town so well no this point he's in sao paulo and that's a pretty big town oh that's a that's yeah that's one of their bigger towns my thought is that if he's confessed to a hundred killings that the gang itself wasn't that big because 40 of those killings spoiler alert over 40 happened while he was in prison. So I'm thinking Ooh. the gang itself wasn't okay. too many people. Maybe. I don't know. Okay. In 1973, Pedro was finally arrested. He was placed in the back of a police car with another man who had been arrested for rape. Both men were handcuffed, so the officers probably didn't think much of placing them in the vehicle together. However... <laughs> When the officers opened the back of the vehicle to get the men out at the jail, the rapist was dead. Pedro had killed him. Nice. Nice. While they were both handcuffed in the back of a police car. <laughs> but they probably didn't have the cameras they had back then. Like nowadays. Oh, they no. Got not in 73. Like, no. So it's like, he choked on his own tongue. I don't know. <laughs> I, okay. How do you, you're in the back of a police car. Were those police just like, was he causing a ruckus? And they were like, just whatever, shut up, dude. And then they get there and they're like, oh, he was, the ruckus was him killing the other person. Maybe they like stopped out or like stepped out for a second. Maybe. Like. I did see that kind of as a source in one of the sources that like they were not necessarily in the vehicle the whole time, but I, I didn't find any confirmation of that. Either way, he killed the guy. He killed a guy handcuffed in the back of a police car. (laughs) He killed a rapist, not a guy. That's different. Valid point. Valid point. Um, For all of his crimes, he was sentenced to over 120 years in prison. However, the law in Brazil, yeah, (laughs) just like, just like your uh, story from last week where it was like a thousand (laughs) thousand years, years. (laughs) yeah, this, this was 120 plus years. So the law in Brazil at the time prevented any sentence from lasting past 30 years. So he was sentenced to 120 years, but he only had to serve 30 of those. The law has changed now, and it's a little bit longer. I think it's 40 years now, but still. He would have only had to serve 30, and that meant he was to be released in 2003. However, Pedro didn't stop his killing spree of other criminals because now he's in prison with exactly who his targets have been for years. Not good guys. (laughs) So behind bars, it is believed that he killed close to 50 other convicts. Possibly more, Whoa. possibly left, but we don't know. Wait, so I, his parents are still alive, right? Well, funny you should ask that because I'm getting ready to tell you about his parents. Well, well they weren't killed when he was a kid, right? He didn't Correct. become Batman, basically. That's what my no. question is. No. He's not He's not. Brazilian Batman. <laughs> no, but remember, his dad beat the shit out of his mom when she was pregnant yeah. with him. Well, the dad continued his little escapade of being a not nice spouse. Um, mm-hmm. And he ended up in prison with his father. It turned out that his father, abusing the mother, 
didn't stop during the pregnancy. In fact, he killed the mother. And I have seen that he oh, killed her with shit. a machete and then dismembered her. Oh, oh that's a yes. fucking gr gruesome way to go. Machete. Oh, for sure. Now, oh. Pedro's in jail and he gets a little, he gets a day release so he can go to the funeral, at which point he swore to avenge her death because he doesn't like criminals and he definitely did avenge her death <laughs> he returned to the prison he managed to get in his father's cell where he stabbed him 22 times he then nice. cut his father's heart out and later admitted that he chewed on a piece of the heart and spit it out on his father's dead body oh Okay, I thought this guy was like just a vigilant. No, he's a psychopath. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yes, but it was his mom. You can kill him and not eat his heart. What the okay, fuck? Okay, he didn't is that? eat it. He didn't yes, eat it. Yes, but he chewed on it. He okay. fully <laughs> said, I didn't eat the heart. He it, actually said in an interview, I did not eat his heart. I chewed it up and spit it out. On his dead like body. Like a piece of fucking bubble gum. That's close yeah. to eating. That's as close to eating as I want to get <laughs> like to a human heart. What the fuck? Agreed. That's basically eating it. His heart Agreed. was in his mouth chewing it. That's okay. all he did was not swallow it. But That's... his mom. His mom okay, but... was killed with a machete and dismembered. It's not like Weight Watchers where I'm going to just take a bite of the steak and then spit it out just for the flavor. <laughs> it... He ate someone's heart. Whether it was his mom that died or not, like, come on, man. That's fucked up. How many, up. That's so how many weird. Weight Watchers points is a piece <laughs> None, of None, because he spit it out, apparently. God. Okay. All right. But <laughs> if, if you're in prison and you uh -huh. end up in prison with a guy who dismembers my body, murders me with a machete and dismembers me, I hope I you dad avenge beat my, my ass. Honestly, I think if if dad I'm not was the saying, one who did it, I'm not saying dad would do it. I'm saying just anybody. I hope. I mean, you're already in there. Yeah. I mean, I know, okay, but still... okay, but let me qualify this. If you're only in there for like 30 days, no, don't do that. If you think you're in there for the rest of your life, what have you got to lose? True, but. <laughs> Uh, still okay so i can't it's expect you to weird. avenge my death i will but i'm not gonna eat their heart no the I'm, I'm not saying you need to on. chew on his heart that's gross that's nasty yeah okay back to our story <laughs> hang on one second i gotta close my door real quick okay okay back to the story although his sentence should have ended in 2003 he served an additional four years for the prison killings he was finally released from prison in 2007. Wait, wait, wait. wait. <laughs> I know, I know. He was supposed to serve 120 and served an additional four, so 124 and still got out. No, what, okay. What, is, what was he sentenced to? I, like... Apparently math in Brazil is different than anywhere <laughs> else. I don't know. 120 so dog years. He was sentenced <laughs> to 120 years, but yeah. the law in brazil at the time said he they couldn't keep anybody past 30 years so it's 30 to 120 what? years yeah the fuck okay i don't know now i think it's 40 years but you, you can't keep somebody in prison in brazil past 30 years back then that's so, fucking weird it is weird and why go to the effort of of sentencing someone to 120 years, just say, okay, it's 30 You're serving years. the maximum of 30 years. Oof. But in the meantime, he's in prison killing potentially 40 or 50 people. And they're like, Jesus, eh, we're just going to give you four, four years well, for that. 
He's saving them tax money, so maybe they're like, this guy's actually helping out. (laughs) He did save them some money. I would be curious to know if anyone did like a cost analysis thing about how much money (laughs) he saved. (laughs) You saved Sao Paulo taxpayers (laughs) $130,000. Oh, shit. (laughs) Oh, my God. So he was released in 2007. For a few years, he led a fairly quiet life, but in 2011, he was arrested again. This time, the charges were possession of firearms and a participation in a riot. He served seven years and was released in 2018. So, I mean, if you really want to do some math, he served seven years for having some firearms and participating in a riot, but he only served four years for murdering Jesus. convicts. <laughs> Well, yeah, that tracks. I'm just saying. Because I don't you know. You might be might, right. They might have weird gun laws down there. Yeah. Like, I don't know what Brazil's gun laws are, but I'm assuming they're not like America's. Probably aren't Probably not. supposed to have them other than like a shotgun for hunting right. or something like that. But yeah. Yeah. So after his seven years for the firearms and riot conviction he was released in 2018 at this point pedro decided to start speaking out about having a life of crime and he did so on youtube he had his own channel on youtube where he spoke about his crimes and officially declared he was done with being a vigilante he was like what's it called hey kids don't do this i don't know I bet you you could find it by looking up his name. Pedro Rodriguez Filho. I'll I'll look that up. Okay. So he commented on modern crimes of the time. He spoke out about gang violence and he encouraged people to stay away from crimes themselves. He was like, don't do what I do, did kids. So it's possible that his YouTube channel and him speaking out against crime eventually led to his death. He was murdered outside of his home on March 5th of 2023. So just a year ago, plus a couple months, it appears that he was the specific target as it was reported that a relative of his was outside the home with him at the time of the attack and was told by one of the assailants to go back inside because this had nothing to do with them. And to date, no one has been arrested for Pedro's murder. So a little over a year and no one, I don't think they have very many suspects, if any, or if they're even really looking into it. I don't know. So I think I found a YouTube channel, but I don't see him anywhere on there. It's mostly... Uh, according to Google, it's Pedrohino X Metador. The oh yeah, okay, um, yeah. Now that you yeah. say that, I do remember that reading that. But yeah. when I looked it up, the it's just like videos of someone else. So I don't know. Well, I guess he's dead now, so he he's not going to be posting deceased. videos. But he died last year, so maybe look for anything before March fifth of last 2023. Year? Okay. All the videos that coming like that are coming up when I select videos on his YouTube channel are uh, just like reels of his wife, presumptively. I don't. Oh, could be. I don't know. Well, okay, yeah. There's videos of him speaking. So yeah, it's Pedrohino X Matador on YouTube. Okay. Uh, the official name. What? Oh, what the fuck was that? So the official name is. Ex Padrino Matador and Doctor Iza is what I found. It looks oh, like okay. The uh, official well, YouTube. I thought it was. It's a crazy story, though. Yeah, for sure. Do you have a chaser for us? I do. So I watched this guy on YouTube called uh, SB Mowing. 
he okay he's like a, a lawn care guy and he'll go around to like if he sees a super overgrown lawn he'll go and ask the owner like a lot of times it's like an elderly person or someone who's sick and can't take care of their yawn oh. like their yard or like an abandoned home or something and he'll go and clean it up completely for free he'll like do every like most of the time he's like this shit's so overgrown it's covering the sidewalk like you can't even yeah. tell there's a sidewalk under it and so wow he makes it look brand new and uh i've been watching him for a while but i just recently found out that so he was doing one of his free lawn care things for an abandoned home mm -hmm. and he came across a kitten like in the weeds oh. that looked like it had been attacked by either another cat or like a dog or something oh my God. and so he called a bunch of animal shelters and the only one that answered him was edgar and ivy's cat sanctuary and rescue oh. and so he brought the cat to them also he's got about 15 million followers over oh. a couple different platforms so Jeez. he told like he told his followers like made a video I found this cat during a yard thing and told them where he dropped the cat off. And in a matter of days, uh, the so the animal shelter was literally about to close like the next month. And because of his video, they got one hundred and ninety thousand dollars in pro private donations. And holy were able... crap. <laughs> yeah. So they were able to take in like so many more cats and like other animals and stuff and i just think that's a super cool story because i i've been watching this guy it's very like yeah like satisfying to watch his videos because you come across like he finds these fucking gnarly looking houses and he's just like can i mow your stuff for free and i'm like yeah absolutely and then he makes it look like like a brand new lawn it looks crazy and the fact that he was able to raise so much just by doing nothing pretty he just found yeah. a cat and brought it to them and posted a video about it and everyone flocked to their that donation page and stuff i think that you've told me about his page before because i think we've talked about it and i don't know if you did it might on have the podcast it up on a chaser you might have mentioned it as a chaser and i was looking at our spreadsheet because you know i'm a dork and i keep everything uh -huh. on a spreadsheet um and i don't see it in there as but i could have named it something weird um my i don't think i knew his name before i think it was just like oh i like watching be. these videos that is amazing that is so i'm assuming Such somebody a adopted story. a cat Probably. I'm, I'm not sure. They didn't mention it in this article, but oh, wait, okay. maybe. Would you say nearly $200,000 for this? 190000 yeah. Holy crap. Wow. That is awesome. Uh, yeah, I'm not seeing anything about it being adopted hmm. yet, but. uh. I imagine oh, that that cat's going to get adopted real quick. Yeah, probably. It was a little cute little tabby cat. Of course it was. What's your chaser? My chaser goes back to my story, and that is that Dexter Original Sin is in production right now, and that is the prequel for Dexter. And hopefully it's going to be released in 2025. Mm. So they have, I saw recently like a lineup of who's going to be in it. Um, it's going to be Dexter as a child and him growing up oh, and learning to be, yeah. So super excited about that. And of course I keep getting shit put into my news feed about it because I've looked it up so, a couple of times and now that's all I see, but there's some good actors that are going to be in it and uh, a bunch of people I didn't know, but it's all going to be hopefully coming out next year, 2025. And I'm really excited for that because that just means more Dexter watch more parties. More Dexter. <laughs> Yay. Yeah. Have, to tie, have to tell Ty to make the face cake again. Yes. Ty, come on. Gina, tell Ty. <laughs> bring the. I think we already told everybody face. about it, but. 
Oh, for sure. Like, I know that we've mentioned it, it like before. A, it's like a cheese dip, like a borsin was, cheese thing yeah, it in was the like shape of a, a face with like prosciutto on top. <laughs> right, <laughs> with with like lunch meat and sliced meat kind of on meat top skin. of the face yeah. so it looked like a meat <laughs> mask. It was so yeah, it was grody. freaking gross and gruesome, but amazing <laughs> at the same time. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. Well, I think that wraps us up. We had a good it episode does. today. Nice long one. It was. Yeah. A little gift for you guys. Yeah. Thanks, Thanks for, for listening, telling us everybody. that cave story. That was wild. I did not know about that. All those details. Yeah. It, having that be uncomfortable. Oh, God. I don't even want to think about it. That's <laughs> terrifying. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Love you, Mom. Love you. Bye. Bye. Hey, friends. Thank you for supporting our podcast. Please share our show with your brutal and bizarre friends. Give us a boozy follow on your favorite podcast platform. If you're feeling extra generous, we'd appreciate a five-star rating or review as well. But maybe do that sober so all the letters are in the right place. You can find all our contact information in the show notes. We love hearing from you, and if you're interested in helping us stock the bar for our future boozy episodes, you can find our Patreon link in the show notes as well.